decades of sci-fi telling us that AI is eventually going to kill us all. And since you know more about AI than arguably anybody in this room, I just want to ask you, what does keep you up at night? What are the things that you worry about when it comes to AI? And how do we prevent those things that you worry about from coming true? I think there's three sort of scary categories. Um, there's a bad guy gets super intelligence first and misuses it before the rest of the world has a powerful enough version to defend. So a, an adversary of the US says, um, I'm going to use this super intelligence to design a bioweapon um, to take down the United States power grid, to you know, break into the financial system and take everyone's money. S something that would just be hard to imagine without significantly superhuman intelligence, but with it becomes very possible. And because we don't have that, we can't defend against it. So that's category, broad category one. Um, and I think that the bio capability of these models, the cybersecurity capability of these models, these are getting quite significant. You know, we continue to like flash the warning lights on this. I think the world is not taking us seriously. I don't know what else we can do there, but it's like this is a very big thing coming. Uh, category two is the sort of broadly called loss of control incidents, where the that's kind of like the sci-fi movie. The AI is like, oh, I don't actually want you to turn me off. I'm afraid I can't do that. You know, whatever. Um, and that's, I think that is less of a concern to me than the first category, but a very grave concern if it came to pass. There's a lot of work we and other companies do um, on model alignment to prevent that from happening. But as these systems become so powerful, uh, that's a real concern. And then there's the third one, which I think those first two are sort of easy to think about and imagine. The third one is, to me, difficult, more difficult to imagine, but quite scary. And I'll, I'll explain what it is, and then I'll give a short-term and a long-term example. Um, this is the category where the models kind of accidentally take over the world. They never wake up. They never do the sci-fi thing. They never open the pod bay doors. But they just become so ingrained in society. And they're so much smarter than we are. And we, we can't really understand what they're doing. Um, but we do kind of have to rely on them. And even without a drop of malevolence from anyone, society can just veer in a sort of strange direction. Um, when I was a kid and Deep Blue, uh, that AI system built by IBM, beat Garry Kasparov in chess, I remember my dad saying, um, this is the end of chess and no one's going to play it again. But then it turned out that uh, actually, although the AI was better than humans, AI plus a human together was way better than an AI or the human. You know, the AI would pre pre present 10 options, and the human would pick the best one or something like that and play the move. And everybody said, oh, we have this wonderful future of man and machine together. It's all no problem, whatever. That lasted two months, three months, something like that. And then the AI got so smart that the human only made it worse because they didn't understand what was really going on. And the AI alone trounced the AI and human. It's been like that ever since. Now, another interesting part of that story is everybody was convinced in the 90s that, that was the end of chess because if AI could beat humans, why, why should humans care? Chess has never been more popular than it is today. People love to watch chess. Something We're very focused on real people doing like real people things. So there was like a very interesting thing that happened there. Um, but this phenomenon, I think, is a really big deal. In the short term, you can see it where people maybe, we call this emotional over-reliance. People rely on ChatGPT too much. There's young people who just say, like, I can't make any decision in my life without telling ChatGPT everything that's going on. It knows me. It knows my friends. I'm going to do whatever it says. That feels really bad to me. Um, and it's a really common thing with, with young people. And we're, we're studying that. We're trying to understand what to do about it. Even if ChatGPT gives great advice, even if ChatGPT gives way better advice than any human therapist, something about kind of collectively deciding we're going to live our lives the way that the AI tells us feels bad and dangerous and a bunch of things like that. The longer term category is, you know, Back to that chess example, what if AI gets so smart that the President of the United States cannot do better than following ChatGPT 7's recommendation? 
but can't really understand it either. What if I cannot make any better decision about how to run OpenAI and I just say, you know what, I fully hand it over. ChatGPT7, you are in charge. Good luck. Um, that might be the right decision in any individual case, but it means that society has like collectively transitioned a significant part of decision making to this very powerful system that is learning from us, improving for us, evolving with us, but in ways we don't totally understand. So that's the third category of how I think things can go wrong. 